Yes, we go on to the next alert because uh, we are in a battle. We are caught in a in a war, and uh, these brokers are battlefield instructions. Those who listen may be able to save themselves and their own people from the damnation, from the, from, from the carnage coming their way if nothing gets done. And so we, we come to the question of this 2023 election that everybody is uh, throwing all over the place, the general overseers in the church asking their people to go and get a PVC, Others saying there are millions of them who will vote in one direction, forgetting that uh, the entry point is controlled by the enemy that has a dog in the fight. Now, we continue to dissect the things that are being done, but are which many do not understand. The election 2023 is actually the third plan in the hierarchy of plan A, plan B, Plan C being executed simultaneously by the enemy in that fight. And if you want to know who that enemy is, look at this map again. Look at this map very closely. The caliphate that imposed that 1999 constitution which tie up the rest of the country, the rest of the land, which confiscate the sovereignties of all which sees the assets of everybody, which sees the, 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 the right to work those assets, which sees all the guns in the land, that caliphate that imposed that enshackling constitution, that apartheid-like constitution, are the ones trying to take out to election to save the life of that constitution, which the rest of us in their liars have defeated by the constitutional force majeure activation of 16th of December in 2020, we have defeated the 1999 constitution. Everything going on now is that those who were drawing governmental powers and authority, mark the words powers and authority, and if you want to understand it, you go to section 14.2a to see the relationship between the two. Those who are drawing, who are illicitly drawing powers and authority from the constitution, the, 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 the fraud of a constitution validated by our, the signature implanted without reference to us. They are the ones who are trying to save that constitution by going to election that will validate the life of the constitution one more time, that will renew the life of that constitution. The rest of Nigeria, in that alliance of the South and Middle Belt, that want to save themselves from the damnation, from the extermination that is coming upon them, from the conquest that is uh, being executed against them, the ethnic cleansing that has been unleashed against them, are the ones saying they will not go to another election under that constitution, insisting that we must go to transition now to terminate the life of that constitution and to restore the sovereignties of those uh, whose sovereignties have been confiscated by sheer force under the code name. Uh, Nigeria. The Nigeria we negotiated died in 1966. The Federation of Nigeria is no more, but there's a country still pretending to be Nigeria in place. There's that country in place, but there's no federation. And so the federal government that have been, all the federal government that have operated since the collapse of the union agreement in 1966 have been illicit federal government. Not, uh, we're not at all talking about the, the personnel who is president. No, we're talking about the federal government of Nigeria in a situation where the federation had collapsed and we are in a unitary system. And so we come back to what are the things, what, what is this enemy doing, what are the rest of us doing? Like I said before, there is a plan A, there is a plan B, and there is a plan C, which is where the elections come. This caliphate is already in full ferocious swing in their plan A, of invasion and conquest. That's their plan A. That they will come upon everybody having laid claim to the entirety of Nigeria, saying that it belongs to them, that they are born to rule others, and that uh, Fulani from everywhere all belong here. 
such that in the ethnic cleansing campaign we see, sweeping southwards, they want to conquer the place outside what that constitution permits, outside what they have gotten by way of the constitution they impose. Because if they conquer physically, their, their, their hold on the land will not be based on the constitution. They know that constitution has been defeated. Where they want, it is the south and the middle bed that do not know. They are still hanging on to that constitution. The people who know have since moved on to Sharia in, in, in defiance of uh, that constitution that says there should be no state religion. The people who know have since moved on to building, integrating, they know that the union is at an end. They are busy integrating uh, their part of the country with Niger Republic. That's why the, 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 the railways that are connecting Niger, that's why the refineries we don't have that are being built there, that's why the railways we don't have that are being built there, that's why the road networks we don't have that are being built there. That part of the country, that caliphate north, is being integrated with the Niger Republic. Of course, we know where uh, the, the Buhari himself told uh, the people that went with him in the cross-border operation at the time it was GOC, uh, you know, the 3rd Division in Jaws, uh, across uh, the border. He told them that his family originally came from uh, Niger Republic. So we, we, we all know, and uh, there's no, no offense uh, by being uh, of uh, Niger origin, or Abacha being from where he is from, or all the other ones in between. Now, the danger we are pointing out now is that uh, the, the, the financing for the heavy infrastructure that has been uh, you know, put in place now is coming from loans obtained in the name of Nigeria by this uh, sectional uh, agenda. You know, uh, billions and billions and billions of uh, foreign loans that have been deployed to uh, integrate the economy of the Caliphate North with Niger Republic. And uh, the, 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 those monies are being borrowed against the assets of uh, the alliance. Some of those, uh, uh, you know, some of those uh, uh, agreements, loan agreements, especially one with, the Chan, with uh, China that's written in Mandarin language, also uh, puts in a cost. I'm sure you will remember the controversy when it arose, that there's a cost to cede sovereignty to China if they do not uh, pay the money. And these are all the things being signed over our heads by people who have their own agenda. They are not doing so on our behalf. They are doing so for themselves uh, and to our own damnation. These are things we need to put on the table so that they know that we know. So that those who are giving them the money will also know that uh, they are doing, they're just, they're just putting their money at, on, at risk unnecessarily. Because uh, from the time in December of 2020, uh, the, the first major that uh, uh, you know, raised the caveat to the international lending community, not to lend any more monies to this disputed project called Nigeria until we sort out the sovereignty dispute that has been raised. Some have listened. They are not offering any loans. Others are not listening, and they are throwing loans to people who may not be on the scene at the time they come for their monies. Uh, just by the, that's, that's by the way. But back to the main issue of uh, what are the three plans that are being uh, pursued? Because we, we, our people know about only one, the election of 2023. That is number three in the hierarchy of, uh, in the order of uh, importance, in the order of, uh, you know, uh, execution. The first is the one that is going on now, raw contest. Overrun them, become the owner of the place, everybody on their knees, and then other discussions will come. That's plan A. Plan B is uh, one in which the same people that are pretending not to have the capacity to contain the terror that is going on are going to compromise our security further by this kind of thing they are already doing to the point where they will assume martial powers. We saw when the Attorney General wrote a memo that leaked to his principal that they should suspend the Constitution. They, want more, they will require more powers than currently uh, available to them in the constitution of now uh, so that they can advance their conquest more rapidly. And uh, the way to as assume that, uh, that, de that uh, depth of power is uh, compromise the security situation uh, to crisis, uh, to chaos level, such that uh, they will say, oh, 
in the face of what has happened with security, uh, we now declare uh, martial law. They can, they can, they can launch a crew. They can do the kind of thing we saw in Afghanistan. They can just uh, suspend their rights and all of that. That's Plan B, and that is closer. The way they are going, the kind of the kind of carnage we see uh, may come to where they say, "Oh, on account of this kind of this level of insecurity, we now suspend, you know, uh, all the rights, like we saw in 1984, and all of that." So that is their plan B, and they are working around the clock to get to that, so that they can continue their conquest unchallenged by the inhibitions placed by this uh, constitution, as bad as it is. The plan C, which is now again a decoy for driving the plan A and B is the election of 2023 by which they have occupied the thinkers and political merchants of southern Nigeria and Middle Belt. Oh, whose turn it is. Meanwhile, even being the plan C, they are taught in the hierarchy of options. They already secured the outcome for themselves. They are in control. The caliphate is in control of the two parties. The caliphate is in control of INEC and the military that will, and police that will uh, carry the ballot boxes and the returning officer that will announce who won, those who will count the vote. They are the ones printing the PVC. They are the ones that will give whoever they give. They know the demographics. If you are 10 million in an area and they give you only three polling votes, there's a maximum number you can return from that area where you think you have those numbers. They may also give 50 polling votes to an area that has less than 3 million people. And so they get numbers that will outweigh the ones you got from. So these are all the kind of gerrymandering that have been going on in our electoral processes, which is why the results are always baffling. But we are now laying them bare on the table. For those who are pinning their hopes on uh, going to win election, and that is where the, the men of God in the land who are telling people to go and get their PVC, they are not listening to us now that the constitution by which the winner will govern will, will, will render the lives of their flock more unlivable. They are going to continue to be killed. They are going to be more impoverished the day after that election, no matter who wins. But the people who are bring, inviting you to that contest, the APC, they have already abandoned this. The carcass of APC, APC that they've left behind, like they left the carcass of PDP behind in 2015. They've all moved to where they want to go, PDP today. A Fulani candidate in the person of article is likely to emerge in that PDP platform. So they drag you to the point where there is a semblance of election, and uh, the world will think that there's been a contestation, but they're in control of the outcome. And that's why part of, part of what they're doing is to make sure they keep throwing it up as the most urgent thing to uh, do, and our people are jumping, buying form, waving PDP and APC flag. Whereas the people they are contending with already settled the outcome of that election by, con by seizing the two political party platforms and seizing control of INEC and the military and police. That's the security services. So whatever anybody is thinking, this broadcast should get to reach all of those who are inviting people to elections, the political merchants, if you know anybody in PDP, from the chairman to the national officers to the governors, all of those who are mobilizing you now, including women leader, church leader, let them see this video that the people they are coming to compete with already settled the outcome. Their strategic pursuit is to keep that constitution that kill the rest of us and impoverish the rest of us you know, alive. Whereas we have defeated that constitution by what we have done, and we can actually go to where we decommission it and free our people from the bondage. Take them to a referendum in a transition so that they decide whether they want to continue in this union, and if yes, on what terms. That's why we now begin to talk about the degree of autonomy acceptable to them. But they, they first have to vote whether they want in by referendum, whether they want to remain in union with anybody, or not. And then if the preponderant, if the majority say they want to remain, then we go to the, that's when the question of the kind of constitution uh, that, will be, that will be used to uh, moderate that uh, union will come up. It's not now. And so let it, be, let, it, let it be made clear to all that 
those who in the face, those from the south and the middle belt, who in the face of this invasion, uh, 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 you know, happening to us, these killings that are coming upon us, this ethnic cleansing that is already ongoing, are distracting everybody by talking about the election, which is, which is something the outcome has been predetermined. You, there's nothing you can do about uh, the caliphate has a dog in the fight. They have a candidate in the election. They are the ones who conduct the election. They are the ones who print the PBC. And whoever wins the election, when they do win, will have to swear to defend and uphold that constitution, meaning that we are back to where we are. Meanwhile, there is no slowing down in the contest they are driving. And they need you to be talking about the election where they are run, overrunning you, like we have seen. You saw them in Kaduna Airport. You saw them in train station halfway to Abuja. You saw them the day after the train station attack that they blocked the road heading closer to Abuja. We hear that schools in Abuja have asked parents to keep their children at home because the security situation, that's now Abuja. The day they blocked the Rokoja Highway, nobody's able to escape from Abuja. Let those who are thinking that is far away from them listen now. Let those who see this video make sure it gets to the general overseers of the church and uh, all of those doing party, whether it's the APC or PDP or Abga or Mega Party or Youth Party, all those things are in the, in the plan C of uh, this enemy that is determined to wipe us off and take over our land. Let us, let us wake up from slumber. This is, this is something that can consume uh, whatever is left of uh, Nigeria is gone. We're not, we're not talking about Nigerians. Those who are talking about saving Nigeria should have done so 50 years ago. It's no longer possible to save that union in the manner they think it could be done. Now we're talking about saving those who are trapped here, the people they call Nigerians. Either we sacrifice the millions to save the Nigeria, or we sacrifice that Nigeria that's unworkable as defined by this constitution and save the millions that are now in distress. But it is the caliphate that is operating that unitary Nigeria that is killing everybody else. Let us wake up to the reality. Plan A, Plan B, Plan C. Find out why the terrorists are making the demand they are making. And put all this information you already have on the calculus. And see how close we are to Afghanistan. Thank you.